In this video, I'm going to give you a quick tour around the GIMP, and also I'm going to point out some of the changes that I make. Before I begin any lessons about editing in GIMP, I want to quickly show you around the application itself. Nothing too comprehensive, just kind of a quick overview of the user interface and some of the changes that I make. So to begin with, when you open up GIMP, it's going to look something like this, where you have several different windows. Uh, this is referred to as the multi-window mode, and I hate it. So the first thing I do is I go to the windows in, up here at the top, just scroll down to single window mode, and this gives me something I can work with a lot easier. Um, everything's all together in one window, I don't have to deal with separate windows. I'm also going to press F11 to go to full screen, just to give myself a little bit more room. In the left panel here at the top, this is the main toolbox. Uh, this is where you're going to select all the tools to make changes to your images. Um, just at first here, this is a selection tool called the Rectangular Select Tool. Uh, you might hear me refer to it as the Marquee Tool, and that's just a bad habit from my days of using Photoshop. Um, if you want to move things around, uh, this is a handy little move tool that you can do it with. Um, I'll just get rid of that box for now. Uh, other common ones, a heal tool, definitely use that for cleaning up people's faces. Clone tool to remove things I don't want. Um, and a brush tool as well here. Um, so if I click and drag while the brush tool is on, I can draw things on my images. Now I use the brush tool a lot, um, but I use it in combination with layer masks. I don't usually paint right on the image. Uh, you'll notice down here at the bottom, uh, there's a little black and white icon. And the, the, one, the box at the top there, the black one, that's the foreground color. And I can change that by clicking on it. And there's several different ways you can actually change the color. Uh, I'm just going to select a red. So now with my brush tool selected, I can click and drag and I'm painting red instead of black. If I want to swap the foreground and background colors, I just click the little arrow icon there. And now I'm painting with white instead of the red that I had selected. If I want to go back to the defaults, uh, there's also another little icon there, two little black and white boxes. If you click on that, I'm back at the default there. Now you may have noticed as I was switching to the different tools there, like let's say I go to the crop tool, I have different options and that all shows up in the tool options down there. So if I want to go from rule of thirds to rule of fifths, I can do down there in my um, tool options. And it'll change for every tool you select. So if I'm on the brush tool, now I have a different set of options. If I'm back at that rectangular select tool, a different set of options. So keep that in mind, everything's done in one place there. And what I actually like to do with this tool options dialog box is I like to click on it. I'm going to click and drag and I bring it over here to the bottom right uh, dock uh, dockable dialog area. And what that does is it leaves me a lot more room to work with over here. So now I can click and drag on this panel on the left and I'm going to go all the way until it's just one single row of tools. I love working this way. It opens up so much more space. Now, depending on the resolution of your screen, you might not actually be able to drag it all the way to the left to a single row. Uh, you might have to settle with just uh, two rows, but it's really whatever your preference is. For me, I like opening up that extra space and making the workspace a lot more usable. In the top right of the screen, you have another area of dialog boxes that you can dock. Um, I don't remember this is the exact setup by default. I've changed it so many times, but I believe you have layers. You're going to have a channels uh, tab, um, pass, and undo history so you can start going back and undo changes. Um, if you see me working in future videos, you might see a little tab here that you don't have on your screen, and that just means I've added something or removed it. And you can do that by clicking on this little uh, arrow icon in the top right. Go to add tab, and now you have more tabs that you can add. So I'm just going to choose a navigation tab, and if I'm, say, zoomed in on this image all the way, now I have a nice handy way to navigate it up here in my top right dialog area. Now, if I want to change that, uh, let's say I want to get rid of one of these tabs. Um, you just want to highlight the tab that you want to get rid of. Go back to that same area, click on the arrow, go to close tab, and now it's removed, and you're just left with what you had before. The tab I work with the most is probably the Layers tab. I'm um, also the Undo History. Now, you'll see me in future videos. Um, I'll make changes to the layers here, and there's, there's a menu for that. If you just click on a layer, or right-click on the layer, um, you're going to get a drop-down menu so you could add a layer mask. I do that all the time. I duplicate a layer as well. I might also use keyboard shortcuts to do that. Uh, you also have the option to actually go back to that arrow at the top right again, and you can get the exact same layer menu just at the top there, 
and you're gonna have those exact same options to choose from. It's just personal preference. And below that, I've already talked about this briefly, you have a second dockable dialogue area and you can make changes here like you would before. Um, by default, it's gonna have brushes. I use that all the time. Gradients, I definitely use from time to time. And the patterns tab, I don't use nearly as much, um, but it may come up in a lesson here or there. And of course, same like the, the um, dialogue above, you have a little, right, a little arrow you can click on and I could add more tabs if I needed them. One more change I like to make, um, you may have noticed earlier when I selected on this layer with this little blue box there, and uh, I went to move things around, uh, there's this little uh, yellow and black dotted line around, and that's called the layer boundary. Um, actually, I really don't like the layer boundaries when I'm working with layers. Now what I could do is I could go up to view, and I could go on the show layer boundary and click it, and now it's gone. Now the problem is, if I open up another image or I launch camp again, that layer boundary box, it's going to keep showing up, and I want to get rid of it permanently. So I'm going to go to Edit, I'm going to go to Preferences, I'm going to go to Appearance, and you have two places here, uh, Normal Mode and Full Screen. Uh, just check the Show Layer Boundary box and click OK. And now next time you open up GIMP, uh, that Layer Boundary box won't be vi visible. But that's really it. Um, I just wanted to give a quick overview of the user interface. So if there's any new users out there to GIMP, you're not totally lost in my future videos. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel and click the like button below. If you'd like to learn more, please consider purchasing the open source photography course available at rileybrandt.com lessons. More information about the course and links to all my social media sites can be found in the description below.